What's up guys, this is Matt Day from The Film Show and today's episode is going to be about the Mamiya RZ67. There's a lot to talk about with this camera, a lot of different parts and accessories you can get for it, so it's a pretty modular system. You can really uh, kind of build the camera to fit your needs. So we're going to go over uh, some of those parts and accessories and kind of talk about the basic functions of the camera and loading the camera, stuff like that, so uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Okay guys, so we're going to take a closer look here at the Mamiya RZ67. And for starters, I'm going to go ahead and note that this is the Pro 2 version. From what I can tell, the only differences of the RZ67 Pro 2 and then the original RZ67 is the fact that over here on this side, uh, your focusing knobs, on the right side you've got an additional one. So you can see here that this knob, when you turn it forward, you know, the lens is going to extend. Uh, by a great amount just from each turn, but the inner knob here, if you turn it, it's uh, a lot slower and it doesn't move nearly as much and that's kind of used for critical focusing. So you can kind of use this to get in the general area of where you're wanting to focus and then you can use this other knob to go really slow and kind of make sure you nail exactly uh, what you're trying to focus on. And then the other difference would be here on the shutter speed dial on the side. Once you get to 250, which is 1 250th of a second, and the next one that you would go to would obviously be 1 1 25th, but there's actually half stop increments in between these. So you don't have to go directly one stop below, you can go half stops in your shutter speeds, which is a helpful feature, but I don't think it's something that I really find myself using all that much. But I do enjoy using the uh, critical focus knob over here on this side, so that is one advantage, I think, of the Pro 2 version. Like I was saying, you're focusing. It's uh, bellows focusing. Your lens is actually moving forward and backward, kind of on a basically a front standard like you would see on a large format camera. And what that's going to allow you to do is get really, really close focus. Um, on the side here, you can see that it's got basically your distance scale for how far the lens is extended and it's going to kind of give you the compensation that you'll need to do on your exposure because whenever you extend the bellows out really far like this you're going to have to add a little bit of light just because with the bellows factor that's going to cut down the amount of light that's passing through the lens and hitting the film back here. And over here on this side like I said before you've got your shutter speed dial. This goes from 1 400th of a second all the way down to eight seconds and then the the full second intervals you can see here are in the yellow and then you've also got B for bulb and you've also got RBL. Now what RBL stands for is if you're using an RB67 lens instead of the RZ67 lens and we'll talk more about that later and you've also got your AEF and that's for uh, your automatic exposure and that's for using a uh, metered prism finder which I do have and we'll talk a little bit more the, about that as well but that basically covers all your shutter speeds. You've got a hot shoe mount right here, which is great. We'll go ahead and uh, take the lens off and I'll show you more about the lens. Uh, to keep in mind, if you guys are gonna take off a lens, you always have to make sure that, you're, uh, that the lens is cocked. And this is a leaf shutter lens, so the shutter is inside the lens and we'll talk about that in a second. But before you try and take off a lens or mount a lens, the shutter does have to be cocked. So if you're trying to figure out why your lens won't come off or why you can't mount the lens on there, that's why. So take the lens off here. What I did was this ring right here. You got the red dots and the white dot there and you just turn it until they line up and that releases the lens. So this is the 110 f2.8 lens. Uh, this is the lens I use all the time on this camera. I did have a 180mm uh, f4.5 lens, which was a great lens, a uh, great portrait lens, really, really sharp. But the uh, 2.8 lens, that's the whole reason I picked up the RZ was for this lens. So um, this is a great lens to have if you're going to be working with the RZ. Uh, your aperture is right here. It'll go from 2.8 to uh, f32. On the back of the lens here, by turning these, you push in and turn them. That's what's going to uh, fire the shutter and then also cock the shutter. So if you need to mount the lens on the camera and the shutter isn't already set, you can manually cock the shutter back here and then mount the lens onto the camera. Like I said, we'll set this back here and now it's locked on. And to talk a little bit more about the lens, it is a leaf shutter, like I said. That means a few different things, but there are a couple uh, key points to take into account for that. And that is, with a leaf shutter, you're going to be able to sync your flash at any speed you're shooting. 
So basically with most cameras that are using a focal plane shutter, you're going to be stuck with a maximum shutter speed that you can use with that camera uh, if you're using a flash. But with a leaf shutter, I could shoot with a flash all the way up to 1 400th of a second. So if you're really trying to uh, really kill the ambient light or really uh, capture uh, fast action, that's, uh, that's going to come into handy if you're going to be using a flash, which I rarely ever use a flash. If I do, it's kind of in a studio setting, so um, that doesn't happen very often. So that's not a big plus for me. But the big plus for me in, when it comes to leaf shutters is the fact that with a leaf shutter, it's not a huge clunk whenever you take the picture. You can do mirror lockups and stuff like that, but I've shot handheld down to a 30th and had really sharp results with this. And that's because that leaf shutter, it's, it's all in the lens. There's not too much camera shake. There is a big mirror in this camera, but still with it being kind of a heavy camera and then that leaf shutter as well, you can get a really, really stable hold on it and then fire the shutter and you're not gonna have too much camera shake. So like I said, I got the RZ67 specifically for this lens, but I knew I would like the setup before because my first medium format camera that I had was the Mamiya RB67 which was the original camera that um, they based this off of. And like I mentioned before with the shutter speed, you could set it to RBL and that stands for RB lens. So if I wanted to take an RB67 lens, I can mount it on here. And those lenses, you set the shutter speed on the lens. So basically you set it to RBL and then you control your shutter speed up here. So it's nice that I can kind of choose any RB67 lens to mount on here or any RZ67 lens because if you're shooting with the RB, you won't be able to use all of these new lenses like the, um, the 110 2.8. Or not, not new lenses, but newer lenses, I should say. So that was the whole reason I went for the RZ, simply because I could use uh, a little bit faster glass like this one here. Now RB in RB67 stands for rotating back, and I'm not sure what the Z stands for in RZ67, but the whole reason it was called the RB67 is because the back rotates. So what you do here is you flip this little lever here to R for rotate, and the actual film back is gonna rotate. Let me show you that again here. You just flip it on the side here, and right now it's in landscape orientation, like this, and then if you rotate it, now it's gonna be vertical in portrait orientation. And there are indicators here on top of the camera you can see that it's showing portrait orientation, and if I rotate it back, now it's showing landscape orientation. So this is a big deal because with a camera like this, especially if you've got a waist level finder, which we'll talk more about finders in a minute, if you're shooting with a waist level finder like this, and everything is already kind of backwards when it comes to your left and right orientation, if you're going to try and do that and then turn the camera on its side to shoot portrait, it gets really, really confusing. So. Being able to have a back like this where, you know, you can kind of choose uh, what orientation you want to shoot in and still hold it the same way, it's, it's great. That's one of my favorite things about this camera. Another thing over here on this lever is if you switch it to M, that stands for multiple exposure. So whenever you advance the shutter again, it's not going to advance the film as well. It's only going to reset the shutter and uh, you can do multiple exposures. So we'll go ahead and talk about the viewfinder now. This is a standard waist level finder and it just kind of pops up into place and you can see in there that you're going to be looking down into the camera and like I mentioned before your left and right orientation is going to be backwards if you're using this because it's not a prism finder where it's going to have a mirror bouncing off of that to kind of straighten things out. If you notice over here there's a little lever and if you push that in your magnifier is going to pop up and that really helps for uh, making sure you're in sharp focus. I pretty much always use that anytime I'm shooting with a waist level finder. But to close the finder, you just pinch these doors in right here, and then it closes up just like that. It's really, really simple. But what's great is you can change the finders, and we'll talk a little bit more about all the different parts and accessories here in just a minute. Uh, moving on to the film back, you've got uh, your standard film back here. It's a 120 back that I have on right now. So with six by seven, I'm gonna get 10 shots per roll. And you've got your frame counter here on this side. And whenever you rotate the back, you've got it on this side. So loading the back is pretty much the same as loading any other 120 back. And I'll kind of walk you guys through that here in a second. But what's great is this little 
latch right here, I can flip that and completely change uh, what film back I'm using. So I have another film back over here and I can have that roll loaded with a roll of color or black and white or even a different film speed so that way I wouldn't have to worry about finishing a roll of black and white before I wanted to shoot color. So that comes in handy uh, especially on a shoot where I want to shoot different things all at once. To uh, open up the film back here there's these two little latches. One moves down and one moves up. It's going to spring the back open and you can see here you've got your uh, film magazine and the way this works is you would take this off here and we'll go ahead and load that in there and then you'll take another roll of film set it right here and bring it around back and load it into this roll and actually I'll tell you what I'll just go ahead and walk you through it right now so load up a roll of Tri-X see here so you'll break this little tab here take that off of there don't need that anymore and like I said you're gonna to want to load the film on this side and you can see you've got these little buttons here that you press down and that's gonna drop this little pin down here set it in there and it's locked into place and now you take the black film out or the black paper I'm sorry uh, turn it around this way, bring it around the back, and then you're going to want to take this little leader and tuck it right in the middle of the other film spool. And like I said, it's pretty simple. If you've ever loaded 120 film before in another film that has uh, a magazine or a back, it's the same kind of concept. And then now that it's in there, you just rotate it until you see the start arrow, which is right there, and you want to line it up with this little arrow down here see right there the little white arrow or triangle lining up with the black arrow and now you're good to go so we'll swing this back the back just uh, slides in right there and then this locks into place and then you just close those two pins like I said before and now you can do it this way and just keep uh, you know advancing this forward and that's going to turn your film uh, until it's set to one or you can do it this way and just with your thumb and it'll stop you once you get to get to one right there okay so the camera's set and the shutter's cocked and everything the film is set to one but you could see it's still not shooting oh and by the way this is uh, where your shutter release button is down here I've got an artisan obscura uh, wooden shutter release button on there right now but you can see it's still not firing even though and that's because uh, I've got the dark slide in and the dark slide goes in between these two white stripes right here and what's nice about these film backs is there's a little sleeve in the back so that way whenever you're uh, shooting you can kind of put the dark slide in there and not worry about losing it because um, as most of you know it's pretty easy to uh, forget where you put this okay another thing to keep in mind here is this camera does rely on a battery which was the one downside that was the one thing that I didn't like about the RZ because I was used to the RB67 which was fully mechanical but it's no big deal um, this uses a 6 volt battery this is a Duracell 28L just a tiny little battery and um, I picked one up and then just went ahead and picked up an additional one to throw in the camera bag in case I ever uh, needed it but in all honesty I've never had any trouble with this one it's lasted me quite a while now and uh, I've never had to change it so and actually inside the viewfinder you'll see uh, a couple LED lights and one will tell you if the dark slide is in if you're trying to shoot and it won't let you the dark slide will light up uh, one will tell you if your shutter isn't cocked and it'll also give you a warning if the battery is dead or if it's dying so that's uh, actually a good feature to have with the battery one thing I forgot to mention over here is you've kind of got a uh, lock so this would probably be helpful in a studio setting but once you kind of get your focus set you can move this forward and lock it and what that's going to do is uh, lock your focus so I can't adjust this anymore with that set and then whenever you're done you just set it back and uh, you're ready to go again now that we've kind of talked about uh, the basics of the camera I'll go ahead and talk about some of the accessories for the camera the first thing that I did whenever I got this camera was I took off the waist level finder which there's two little pins or two little buttons right here on the sides press one in press in the other and this pops right off just like that but the first thing I did was put on the prism finder because 
I was so used to waste level finders and I wanted to see how I would like a prism finder, which is going to fix your left and right orientation and um, you'll actually be able to shoot at eye level. And for portraits, that was a big plus for me. After using this, um, I never use my waist level finder anymore. It does add a lot of weight to the camera whenever you use a prism finder, but being able to shoot at eye level, like I said, and not always have to be uh, shooting with the camera lower than your face or lower than eye level, this really comes in handy, especially for shooting portraits, which is what I mainly use this camera for. I never use the uh, actual meter in the finder. The only reason I use it is for the fact that I can shoot at eye level and um, to me it just it, it makes shooting with this camera a lot more comfortable and a lot easier. So this is one thing that I would recommend to anybody who's going to be shooting with the RZ. It's always on my camera and I really wouldn't want to shoot it uh, any other way. Another thing to uh, consider if you're going to be using an RZ system is using an instant back like this back right here. This is loaded with Fuji FP100C and whenever I load this back on there I can actually shoot instant film making this a really uh, unique and fully manual instant camera. So I'm going to have full control over my aperture and my shutter speed. Now the one downside to this is it's not going to use the full space of the Polaroid because the 6x7 negative is smaller than the size of pack film you're going to have kind of a black border around your photo inside the Polaroid frame, but it's not a big deal. The main reason they made these was kind of before digital, they could actually, you know, set up their studio lights and then shoot test shots and see it right there and notice if they have to change anything. So it wasn't really made for, um, you know, just to shoot instant film, but a lot of people nowadays use it and it is a lot of fun to use uh, something like this, you know, on a shoot or if you don't have a fully manual camera and you want to shoot some instant film and actually completely control your exposure, uh, this is definitely a lot of fun to mess with. And with this, the dark slide is over here on this side, but um, even with the dark slide in, it will fire and I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys that now. So because it's not uh, electronically connected to uh, your camera like the standard film back is, it will still fire with the dark slide in. So I'll kind of show you guys the sound of the shutter again. I like the sound of the shutter. Um, I know that's really not a big deal about a camera to a lot of people, but I always like hearing the way different cameras sound as far as, you know, the different knobs on the camera, the shutter sound, everything. So I like the sound of the RZ67 shutter. I just had to throw that in there because I enjoy the nerdy stuff like that. So, take this back off and put the standard film back back on the camera. And one more thing that I'd like to talk about is the L grip for the camera. Show you how this uh, sets on the bottom of the camera. Basically where the tripod mount is and you've got uh, two little kind of sockets on each side of it. You set this down on the bottom and this will go directly into the tripod mount, but you do also have an extra tripod mount here. And then on this side, you flip that little lever up and then you plug this cord in and that's gonna let you control the shutter with this over here. It really makes a really comfortable setup. You know, I can hold the camera uh, with my left hand completely and then just focus with this, especially if I'm using the prism finder. It does make for a huge setup with the prism finder and with the grip attached on here. And just the RZ in general, it's already a pretty big camera, but this is just, it's such a fun camera to work with, especially whenever I've got it set up like this. It's just, it's a really unique kind of experience when shooting with this camera, and it's just, it's a lot of fun to shoot with. I use this mainly for my job, for shooting portraits, but um, I mean, it's always fun to use this camera for just about anything, so... This is one I would really recommend to anybody, especially anybody who's wanting to get into medium format. Um, my first camera was an RB67. You can get those for extremely cheap. And honestly, if it's gonna be your first medium format setup, I would probably recommend the RB because you're gonna be able to get it for a lot cheaper. But, um, but if you're looking for something a little more high end, if you're talking medium format, um, I would definitely go for the RZ, which 
in all honesty, it's still not extremely expensive whenever you see how expensive medium format can get, but um, it does give you great, great results. Uh, Mamiya lenses are outstanding. Uh, this is just, it's a really fun camera to work with. It's a fun setup. So that pretty much covers uh, everything on the RZ67. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them below. And also if I forgot anything, you know, don't hesitate to uh, mention that as well. I think I covered everything, but um, you know, this is all off the top of my head. So there's a good chance I left a few things out. So if you think I've missed anything, don't be afraid to uh, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. And that's about it for this video. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.